Hey everyone, Zach here from Windows Central and welcome back to another video. Now today we're taking a look at Windows 11 build 22572. This build includes a number of notable changes and enhancements over the last public preview build and indeed the last build video that we did. So let's waste no time diving straight in. I want to start off with a feature that isn't technically official yet. This isn't in the change log, Microsoft hasn't announced it, but you can enable a sort of early version of it in this build, and that is tabs in File Explorer. Yes, Microsoft is finally doing it. They're finally adding tabs to the File Explorer app on Windows 11, and it works just like you would expect. Along the top here, we get uh, an interface which provides us with tabs. I can press on this plus button here, and that will open a new tab within the same app window, which is fantastic. I can then move on to a different folder here, open up a new tab, open up another folder, open up a new tab, open up another folder. So as you can see, we have four folders running within the same File Explorer window, which is just frankly amazing. We've been asking for this feature for so long and it appears Microsoft is finally bringing it to Windows 11. Uh, now, like I mentioned, this is a very early sort of look at this feature. This isn't enabled by default. Microsoft hasn't yet announced it. Um, and what that essentially means is it's not working fully just yet. Yes, the UI is working and the ability to create new tabs within one window is working, but things like dragging files between tabs and stuff uh, is not working just yet. As you can see, this is this is not functional. Uh, neither is being able to sort of move tab windows around. That's not functional either. All of that I assume is yet to come. For now, we're just taking an early look at the UI because that's sort of the first thing that's been enabled in this build. And yeah, I think it looks pretty good. It looks kind of like you would expect a tabbed interface to look. Uh, these corners are a little bit more rounded than we've seen in other apps. I think Windows Terminal and Edge have slightly sharper corners on these tabs. You know, there's still time for them to fix up the consistency of this tabbed interface so it matches the rest of the Windows 11 uh, design. You know, so far I think this is looking really nice. So uh, that's great to see. Uh, and I'm excited to see where this feature goes. Now, moving right along, the next area I want to sort of take a look at here is with the system tray. Uh, the last few weeks have been really interesting for the system tray. There's been a lot of minor changes and enhancements to it. Uh, that we haven't really covered in the builds before. So I kind of want to do that now, starting with the highlight effect when you hover over icons within the system tray. That is now consistent even with uh, third-party apps. Uh, they've also changed the behavior of how this works, though I think this still could change, I don't know, but you can no longer just drag these icons onto the taskbar. That's not how that works anymore. You have to right-click. Oops, sorry, I didn't want to open that. Oh, great, now that's stuck open. Let's close you. There we go. Uh, so yeah, to add uh, those third-party icons to the uh, the system tray here, I have to right-click, go into taskbar settings, scroll down to um, other system tray icons, and then you can enable them from here. So if I wanted to add uh, OneDrive or Teams uh, or the Windows security notification, I can do that through here. And as you can see, they now show up, but they now have the correct hover effect, uh, which is really nice to see. Uh, additionally, they've also added the ability to turn off the overflow menu, which I don't think was there in the in the shipping build of Windows 11, but this this over, overflow menu here can now be turned off completely. And well, I turned it off while, the, while the, the menu was open, so now it's stuck open. But if I close that first and then turn off the menu, the arrow disappears. Even though those icons are still present in the overflow menu, I no longer have to see the arrow. Uh, of course, this means you can no longer access the overflow menu, um, but uh, interesting that you can finally turn that off. I actually think that actually makes it look really clean down there, which is uh, nice to see. Additionally, uh, Microsoft has updated the Do Not Disturb icon. Uh, it was a sort of crescent moon before. Now it's a bell icon with some Zs or Zs in it. If we click on that, you can see we have Do Not Disturb on. You can turn that off if you want. And then that goes back to looking like it normally does, which is pretty nice. Uh, elsewhere in this build, Microsoft has added a new family app, which ties into the Microsoft family service um, and allows you to track family members. If you, you know, if you have children and you want to keep an eye on what they're doing on their PCs, you can use this app to do that. You can add a family member like this using a Microsoft account set up for your child or children. Uh, and then through here, you can see it set things like content filters, screen time. You can also uh, check on your family's location. So just make sure they've gone to school and stuff. Uh, you can limit their spending on their Microsoft account. You can also set up activity reporting. So if they use things like Edge or Xbox, you can see what apps and what websites they're actually using on their PC and on their console. You can also set up family email, family calendars, and a family OneNote, uh, which is super fun. And then of course, there's integration with Microsoft Teams where you can use things like um, the Microsoft Teams for consumers clients to communicate with family uh, in your group, which is uh, pretty cool. Uh, there's also a, a quick assist app. This isn't new necessarily, but they have made it so it can now be updated via the Microsoft Store. So that's fun. Uh, and that's 
basically everything. No, it isn't. I lied. Uh, Microsoft has also included ClipChamp now. That's now a preloaded app on Windows 11. And it looks like this. Um, it's a web-based video editor, believe it or not. So let's give us a second here to log in. Now, because this is web-based, I fully expect this to not be a great experience. Uh, but we'll give it a go. You know, we shouldn't judge before we've tried it. Uh, what sort of videos bring you to ClipChamp? I am a business I want to, what do I want to do here? I want to, I want to coach, consult, or present. I think that's some along those lines. Okay, let's see what we're doing here. We can start with a template. We have a bunch of different preloaded templates here, or we can just create our own video. Let's start with a, a quoted template. Why not? And then we've got a bunch of different templates here. I like this one. Cool. Use this template. And that will take us into the video editor. And we, from here, we can actually start uh, editing all of this good stuff. The way to get started is to quit talking and begin doing. <laughs> Walt Disney. Great quote. All right, okay, so we can actually edit this now. So uh, let's say... Uh, the way forward is to not look back. Who said that? That's right. Can I edit that? Give me the edit button. Yes. Zach Bowden. Nice. Okay. And then that's how that works, really. So it's a very simple editor for editing quick videos. The way forward is to not look back. Zach Bowden. Fantastic. Uh, and yeah, we can customize the background here by lots of things. We can delete it. Yes. I want a different one. Let's add a different one. Uh, stock video. That's nice. Let's see here. I'd rather a free template, please. Anything. This one looks cool. Uh, right. Add to my timeline. There we go. Now, because this is web, as you can see, it has to load in because it's literally pulling it in <laughs> from the web. But now it's actually here. You can see that that's working as expected. The way forward is to not look back. Uh, and then we can uh, make that shorter. We can uh, split it if we wanted to. Uh, can we do filters? Oh, yes, we can. Awesome. We can make this look black and white, which is pretty fitting for a, for a quote. So it switches to black and white midway through <laughs> for some reason. Uh, we can apply the fade effects. Oh, we can. Yes, look at that. Fantastic. So, that, yeah, that works as you would think it would. There you go. Nice. So, yeah, this is... Um, you do have to pay for this. Uh, as you can see, if we click on upgrade here, um, continue without connecting. Can I not? Here we go. So as you can see, we, there, you do have to pay for this. This isn't a free app. There is a free version. The basic app, which we're using here, is free. But you can only export in 480p, which is essentially useless for most people these days. You want at least 1080p, which is, for some reason, crazily limited to the business SKU, which is $20 a month or $19 a month. Uh, the creator one is $9 a month, but you can only export at 720 which is frankly unacceptable the seven okay here's how this should work the 720p should be for the free model and then 1080p should be minimum for the paid model um 10 720p minimum is unacceptable or maximum for sorry for the creative skew here it is it's just unacceptable uh, but anyway that that's besides the point you can either pay monthly or pay yearly uh, but as, as you saw there there is a free version which is what we're using and it's it's good enough for for very quick sort of social videos you know 480p should be fine for twitter i think um, but if you're actually looking to edit together you know a presentation or something uh, for work or school 720p 1080p you're going to want to sort of pay for that unfortunately but yeah there, there you are that's the uh, the clip champ app ClipChamp, yeah, ClipChamp app. That's pretty difficult to say. Uh, now preloaded on Windows 11, uh, starting with this build, which is pretty fancy. Okay, so I think that's pretty much it for uh, this build. Thank you so much for watching, and I shall see you in the next one. Bye-bye.